It's my final project for SPED 611 Administration of Special Education. Inclusivity at Crofton High School. Why is this important? First of all, we have to follow all the guidelines of IDEA, which is Individuals with Disabilities Education Act and Section 504, and these simply state that everyone is entitled to a free, appropriate public education, and so it's our duty to make sure that all students are receiving this. Students with disabilities need to be included in regular classroom activities with their peers, if at all possible. Students deserve to be feel or to feel included even if they do have a disability, whether it be a physical disability, a learning disability, or anything else. We want our students to succeed in their everyday environment, and their everyday environment is our classrooms. If they don't feel uh, welcome, if they don't feel included, then they're less likely to succeed. And finally, this should already be happening, but now we're going to make sure that it's effective. How do you implement it within your classroom? You're going to want to try to create activities within your lesson plan where all of your students have the opportunity to be involved. Um, although you will be presenting a lesson plan, uh, don't forget how important the appeal of the classroom is. Um, and we'll be getting to the presenting a lesson plan here in a little bit, but think of the following when it comes to your classroom. Uh, the student desk or table organization. Is it easy for each student to maneuver around each desk and get to where they need to go? Are you, you as the teacher, easily accessible to all students? Do you have posters hanging up? Do you have decorations? Are they changed frequently? Do they, um, do they change for holidays? And if you do some holidays, do you do all holidays? Um, so you need to be thinking about things like that. Do you have an agenda displayed? Some kids really like to see an agenda on the board. They follow along, they know what's coming next, and it keeps them cal calm and collected because they know what's coming next. Uh, think about when you, when you make groups. Are you putting kids with different kids each time, making sure that everyone is involved with everyone? And how do you greet your students each day? Do you meet them at the door? Do you say, welcome, how are you doing? Do you ask them about their weekend? Simple things like that can definitely make kids feel much more welcome and much more included in the day-to-day -day classroom. When you are creating these lesson plans or decorating your classrooms or thinking of things to help students feel included, make sure you're being creative. Don't be afraid to try new things. Students usually are up for a challenge, so embrace that. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's okay. Look at the makeup of your classroom and decide how you can make everyone feel included on a day-to-day -day basis. And that can go back to uh, the desk organization, the groups that you make, um, and just how you greet your students each and every day. And I always kind of go back to this, wouldn't you want to enjoy the majority of the days when coming to school as a student? So try to keep that in mind when you try to create a classroom um, and trying to make everyone feel included. So this is how we are going to share out to others, um, others being other teachers. Each month of the school year, we will host a staff meeting in the library, and at this staff meeting, the following will take place. Three teachers at each staff meeting will share their favorite inclusive activity and lesson plan they used in their classroom with the rest of the staff. With the rest of the staff. Include struggles and successes. Even if the lesson plan didn't work, we can still have a good discussion about that, bring that to the staff meeting, present it, and then we can discuss it further. Uh, the second thing is question and answers for the presenters, so the people who are listening can ask the presenters what worked well, what didn't work well, maybe what students did you have in your classroom, maybe they have the same students, or um, just wanna know a little bit more about your lesson plan. The third thing is we're gonna get into groups to discuss other ideas to hopefully um, think of new things that we can do for the next month in the next staff meeting for the student for the teachers who will be presenting just a few examples i put together um, you can create groups when when special education students get to stay in the general classroom and participate in those groups that's a big thing uh, a lot of times when we create lesson plans the special education students need help and so they actually leave the room to go to the resource room or to get help from another teacher or a para if you can create a lesson plan where they can get help from their peers, they're actually able to stay in the classroom, which I think they'll enjoy a lot. 
peer tutoring uh, with partners for assignments to promote communication among class along among classmates that could definitely help you can create lesson plans so special education students are able to stay in your classroom that goes right along with that first bullet and have times in your classroom where class-wide discussion is allowed and make sure everyone has the opportunity to speak whether that be making everyone raise their hand or just randomly calling on people um, and saying you have to answer but you can pass but we're going to come back to you type of thing so everyone gets a chance to talk a few more examples Use multiple instructional platforms to reach every learner, and that could be a PowerPoint, that could be reading from a textbook, that could be looking at historical documents, it could be getting with a partner and working with a partner, exchanging homework, looking to make sure everyone's doing it correctly, simple things like that. Um, allow a student to lead a class discussion, that's another option. Make sure all resources are available for any special education student participating in the lesson. For instance, if you are going to have um, an activity that uh, requires cutting with scissors, if a student doesn't have the ability to use a scissors, then you need to have those parts cut out for that student. Or you need to assign a partner that w is willing to do those, uh, those steps for him or her to make sure that that student can still participate in that lesson. If you're not creating those things and technically that student is not being included in the lesson and the inclusivity is is completely gone and finally create optional or graded study guides for the content that you're teaching um, if you're making it optional then the kids who uh, think they need a little extra help may come to you on their own maybe they don't want to do it in front of their classmates but they may come on their own to get a study guide to complete it it may not be for a grade, but they may know they need the help and they may come to you. You could also give graded study guides. And this, um, this is going to have everyone complete the study guide, which is a good thing. You could also do um, an inclusive activity where they get together and check their answers. So lots of different examples, lots of different ways that you can uh, be inclusive in your classroom. And so I challenge you to just look at your classroom when you walk into your classroom does it look inviting do you think kids are inviting or feel invited into your classroom and then that comes down to you too how are you greeting your students every single day because if you greet your students in a very positive way then it's much more likely that your lesson plan is going to go a lot better thank you